Hey everybody, I'm Chris with HBYOB, you remember me, the meme guy. I'm here to talk to you guys about making a yeast starter. So first we're going to get into some of the tools that you might need. Of course, obviously, you're going to need your dry malt extract and your ye uh, liquid yeast strain in order to create it. A vessel in order to hold the yeast starter after you're done, and we'll get into the differences between the two that I'm holding here. Some sanitation equipment that you, that you might have at home already, and also a stir plate. This is optional. We'll get into why here soon. So when it comes to putting together a yeast starter, of course, some folks might see all of the stuff that we have sitting up here and wonder, what's the associated cost with that? And we're going, go, we're going to go through two routes today, the rich man's route and the poor man's route, or the let's just get the job done route. Now for the rich man's route, we would recommend the Erlenmeyer flask and the stir plate. The Erlenmeyer flask, which you can, you can set directly on your stovetop if it's a gas stove, and that would allow you to create everything within this, within this flask along with the foam stopper that allows oxygen to get in and CO2 to get out along with the stir plate that would allow the yeast to stay in suspension like during the time that it's fermenting. That's one way to do it, and these two pieces of equipment will run you about $86. Now, I know you're sitting at home saying that $86 on top of everything else that I've had to purchase, I don't want to do that. Totally understandable. So that's why, for the poor man's route, or let's just get the job done route, we're looking at some equipment that you might already have at home. Here. Most folks might have access to a growler at home, and if you don't, we have them available here at the store for $4, along with a bung for a dollar and an airlock, which most of you also might have at home as well. That will only run you about five bucks. $86 versus $5. You do the math on the value here. So you can choose whichever way that you want to do it. And then as I mentioned with the stir plate before on the rich man's route, again, that's just allowing you to keep the yeast in suspension. If you don't have access to a stir plate, you can just pick up the growler and do a little shimmy here and that will accomplish the same the same goal. So, now with that being with that being said, let's look into what else what else is required. You're going to need some cold water in order to rapidly cool the wort like after you're done boiling it and we're going to have a separate video in place also that will show you the step by step step by step instructions of how to create a, a yeast starter. So now, when it comes to the liquid yeast itself, which is what we would generally recommend instead of a dry yeast, there are a number of different suppliers that create uh, liquid yeast strands that you can use. There's White Labs, there's Y Yeast, Imperial, and Omega. Each of them have their individual specific guidelines for when you should use a yeast starter. For example, uh, WLP351, if you look on the back, they should have a pitch chart on the back of the, of the packet. And there they will give you their own guidelines for when you should use a one liter yeast starter. And I believe for that strain in particular, anything over 1.050 as your starting gravity would be their general recommendations for when you use a yeast starter. Now, with all that being said, it's never a bad thing to make a starter. Now, we just referenced an example that tells you specifically when you should use one, but you can use one whenever you want if you're using a liquid yeast strain. Why? Because once you do that, you're introducing an active yeast, uh, active yeast into your beer. And that, in and of itself, allows or reduces the risk of producing off flavors with the final product. So some of the pros and cons for using a yeast starter is that, again, if you bought, let's say, a yeast, or a yeast strain or you purchased a kit online and it either sat around or because the weather hasn't been cooperating with you and you, don't, and you haven't been able to brew yet, you don't, the yeast might be old. So in cases, in the cases when that happens, you can create a yeast starter and ensure again that you're not going to have those off flavors once everything's done. Some of the cons for doing it is, as you can see here, some extra equipment plus the knowledge and know-how in order to create a yeast starter might be required. But hey, that's what we're here for at the store in order to answer all your questions. So that's it when it comes to the overview of creating a yeast starter. Please click on our other video for the step-by-step -step instructions in order to create a yeast starter, and let's brew some beer.